Hey gang, today we're going to do one from one of my favorite guitarists, Brian Setzer. Now I don't think I've done one of his before, so it's about time. We're going to go all the way back and do one from one of his really early days, Stray Cat Strut. We'll do the first solo off of that one. Um, it's a great solo. I love that chord progression. You know, that Tennessee Ernie Ford, 16 tons. Actually, Merle Travis wrote that song. But anyway, that chord progression um, that you're all familiar with, really cool. And the solo in it is really super cool, too. It's got those bluesy runs in it. It's got some neat arpeggio work. And um, it's even got a diminished run in it. So it's got all the sort of rockability uh, elements in it. Really great solo. So anyway, hey, if you like this one, go ahead and click the like button. If you haven't yet, subscribe for one of these every week. We'll see you in just a second. All right, gang, let's go over this note for note. Before we do, you can download the, the tab from the link in the description below. It's definitely going to make your life easier. And uh, you may be wondering why we're a bit farther out. We're panned a bit back here. Um, I'm going to demo the whole solo, and it kind of goes a lot of places in the neck. So I want to give you the whole view of the neck. That's number one. Number two is uh, there's a little bit of the right hand that's going on. But most importantly, I've got this Bigsby thing going on, which you can get away without doing a Bigsby and just doing some vibrato. And that works fine. But if you do have a Bigsby or any tremolo system, uh, having that's going to help a little bit, and so we'll show you where those hits are. All right, so we'll demo that kind of slowly in just a second. We'll do the uh, that solo kind of slowly. Uh, but before we do it, I want to talk about two other things. One is the sound. Okay, so the sound here, um, I'm getting, obviously I'm using a Gretschy type of style guitar, but um, you don't need that. Um, certainly a Telly or a Strat would be fine. Uh, and if you have a Les Paul, you can do it with that as well. Uh, you don't want to have, you want to have a clean sound. And uh, maybe just so it's a, just a little bit of breakup. And if you're using a Les Paul, try and give it more of a trebly sound. Maybe you can scoop out some of the mid-range, uh, take some of that out. And that's going to sound just fine. Now, the, the kind of the key to this one is that slapback echo effect. You hear that? There's just a bit of slapback echo. Now I actually have a pedal that puts that on, but you can get that, and in fact I'm using it right now, through by a delay pedal uh, that has the delay set to very quick, you know, um, super fast. Maybe, I think it's what, five milliseconds, something like that. Uh, just so super fast, and then you only want it repeating once. So uh, make sure it doesn't, you know, repeat over and over. So it's just that one slap back. All right. Okay, so that's how I'm getting that sound. And uh, all right, so let's go over the chords. Now the chords, I love these chords. Um, uh, I love the basic chords here. We're basically going a C minor to a B flat major to an A flat major, to a G7. All right? So like I said, it's got that 16 tons sort of feel to it. Um, yeah, it's just a great chord progression. And the minor scale, or the harmonic minor scale, is going to work really well over this. Or the minor pentatonic blues scale, as we will find out. All right, so that's the backdrop for all of this. So basically, it's a C minor song, and that's what most of the licks are going to be in. All right, let me play the whole thing sort of half speed, and uh, we'll take it from there, okay? Here we go. And that's the whole thing kind of slowly. Now 
Let's break it down line by line. Okay, here we are a little bit closer up and let's go through it line by line. All right, here is the first line. All right, this line is right out of a the, uh, the blues box position here in C minor. So we're just starting this out in this blues box position at the eighth fret for C minor. Like that one. All right, we're starting out with a little bend on the third string, 10th fret, and we're just going to really give it a super amount of vibrato. So a lot of shake there. Now you can use your whammy bar if you want, or your, your Bigsby. That sounds good. But um, I'm just doing it the old-fashioned way and using my left hand, all right? Second thing is a double stop on the first two strings, eighth fret. Okay, so here we've got this. All right, now we do this. Typical blues lick, right? Uh, bending up on that tenth, the whole fret, pulling off and kind of coming down like that. Okay, to end it, we do this. So here we're shifting down two frets and moving into the next position and playing 6-8, six, 6-8, eight, six, eight, and then a hammer on pull off 5-8. All right, so let's put the whole line together now. That last one is just a lot of finesse. Okay, let's do the next line. All right, so this one really starts out with a, uh, a, tri a uh, arpeggio over that C minor chord, and it's almost like a harmonic minor because we're starting from the note below the C on the fifth fret. Okay, so we're just going to basically be playing a C minor arpeggio with that extra note. All right, and now we're going to play this. So we start with that C minor arpeggio, and now we're simply going to an A flat arpeggio, right? So the first one is based on our arpeggio of this C minor chord, right? And the second one is based off of this A flat major chord, right? If you know this one, all I'm doing is playing the, the middle three strings on this. That last note coming down to the second string, sixth fret is basically the seventh of that G chord. Right? It really fits this. All right. And on that last note right here, we give it a uh, we give it a Bigsby dip. All right. So here's the whole line again. Here's the next line, a series of chords. Okay, the first one's pretty straightforward. I'm just barring on the 8th fret, strings 3, 2, 1, and I'm, so that's like a C minor, right? Now I'm playing basically the shell from a 6th chord, okay? So this one's like a B flat sixth chord. It's very similar to that. All right, so I'm basically I'm playing on the fourth string. I'm playing the eighth fret. Third string I'm playing seven. Second string eight, and first string six. All right. Then I just shift that whole pattern down two strings, which is an A flat. And then this. 
which is my G7. But again, I'm only playing on strings 4, 3, 2, 1. So I've got 5, 4, 6, and 1. Give it a dip on the Bigsby. Alright, and that's that line. Let's play the whole thing again. Alright, let's do that last line of the solo. Here we go, probably the coolest one. Alright, so what's going on there? Well, this is basically, this is when the rest of the band stops. So what's going on there is basically a diminished run, right? So it's it sort of is like this. Um, except Brian Setzer, of course, does something a lot cooler sounding. He does this sort of stutter step, right? How does he do that? How does he get up to speed? Well, I'm not sure how he does it. I'll tell you how I do it. I do it with something, um, I think metal players would probably call it economy picking. All I'm doing is I'm going across strings with a downstroke. So let me show you just on the first line, okay? So the first line is this. So that's on the fifth string. It's three, five, and six. And then on the fourth string, it's four. And we're stopping on that four, right? So here's how I do it. I play a down stroke, then an up stroke, and then two down strokes. So a down on the fifth, and then I carry it to the fourth. So it'll look like this. So, and that's how that that's how that works. Now it does take some practice, and I would say practice that one string uh, transition first, and then move on to the next one. But um, let me give you some tips. So, at, or a tip at least how I work it. So what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about targeting the first finger each time. So. I target first this one, then this one, then this one, and I actually target the second finger here because I've got a bend and I'm coming down. All right, so I target. And when I think about that, <clears throat> it helps me play through the string below it. messed up on that one. It just helps me target that. Take it really slowly and you'll get it. The key is that when you move down a string, like from the fifth to the fourth or the fourth to the third, that you're doing a downstroke on both of those, okay? So if you learn this, you're actually learning economy picking. Yay for you. Yay for us. Okay, anyway. Uh, one of the few places where I've actually used it is on this solo, and I think it's a really cool effect. All right, to come out of it, at the end, you're, you're starting in this. So he holds this a little bit longer. He doesn't gradually bend it. He holds this note along and then bends it up a, a half step, uh, then plays the... 8th fret, 1st string, and I actually just give that a slight bend on the 4th, uh, on the 3rd string, 7th fret, ending up on that C on the 5th fret, 3rd string. Alright, and then there's just a series of double stops, and then you're into the rest of that song. This one is just, uh, let's see, on the, these are all on this third and second string. We're going to do five, four, slide up to seven, six, then play eight, eight, and then ten, nine. One more time slowly. And that's it. Well, there you have it, gang. 
Brian Setzer, the first solo off of Stray Cat Strut. Really a remarkable solo. Lots of stuff packed in just a few uh, bars of that short solo. So really awesome. Hopefully there's a technique or two that you learned or at least can just enjoy the solo and uh, play along to that great chord progression. Until next time, we'll see you on down the road.